gave you a conversation with, with Coach Mike Bobo about coming here and how to get uh, Well, um, Coach and I were uh, extremely close. Um, we, we worked together in the early 2000s. I was a graduate assistant. Uh, we were both young. Coach was a young full-time coach. And, and, um, and we were the same age and kind of the rest of the coaches on the staff were a little older. And uh, we kind of built a good relationship. And, and uh, so we continue to have that relationship. And professionally, I think uh, we always kind of clicked pretty well. We had a lot of the same beliefs and things. Same philosophies. Um, both come from football families, and uh, and then I had the opportunity. I was at UAB, and, and um, Stacy Searles left the University of Georgia to go to uh, Texas, and uh, they could have hired anyone in the country uh, at Georgia, uh, and um, and Mike stood on the table because he knew what he felt like we could do together, and uh, so I was at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. Uh, we had had success offensively, but not really a program that, that a lot of people know about. Um, and then um, went to Georgia, had a lot of success, things worked out. And then when he had the opportunity, and uh, you know, not only were, were we close and our family were close, uh, but um, professionally he, he, he stood up for me to give me a chance. And, uh, and there was no way that I wasn't coming to to, to help him in his his first chance to be a head football coach, and the fact that I believe in him, uh, I know what kind of person he is, I know how competitive he is, um, I know as the offensive line coach, uh, it's it's really not a lot of times. There's a the, the head coach is the play caller, and I think he's the best play caller in the business. And uh, if if, I, if I'm gonna have the title of offensive coordinator, I want the guy that's the best play caller in the country calling plays. So that's that's uh, all been plus. But what he did for me, I wanted to do the same thing for him. And then just the fact the way that I believe in him and and, uh, and know what kind of competitor and that he's a winner and what he's going to do here, and I wanted to be a part of it. How much does him sticking up for you like that drive? <coughs> well, well, there's no question, and, and you know we're all competitive, uh, and, and uh, so. Uh, we're going to compete, and we want to win. We, we all have drive anyway, but I, I do think there's a, a, a personal touch to it that, that I want to make this, this right for him. And uh, um, I think anybody that's been around uh, Coach Bobo um, um, at the University of Georgia, any of the coaches on that staff, uh, on that offensive staff, any of those players on that that were offensive players there, and really – defensive players too. And I think these guys here are starting to see that also. You don't want to let him down and you want to make this thing successful. And uh, so um, a lot of it is because of the way he is. How like-minded are you offensively? And how much give and take is there banter back and forth with ideas? Uh, you know, we're, we're a lot of like, we believe in, in toughness. We believe in, in, in being physical. Uh, we also believe in being balanced. Uh, and. and being able to do more than one thing. Um, we, we don't want to be um, strictly a run football team. We want to be a team that can that can win throwing the football and be a balanced team and also running. And uh, so we have a lot of a lot of the same beliefs. We believe in that, that the run game or is not really about inventing ideas and new schemes and those things. A lot of our run game and, and stuff that that uh, has been working for. Uh, a long time, uh, 40 years, I, you know, when Coach Hughes was probably coaching here when some of the stuff we run was, it was successful then, it'll be successful when I'm when I'm gone. And then in the passing game, the things that we believe in as far as uh, protection and, and, and what the quarterback needs to do and, and the quarterback controlling it and then how well he coaches the quarterbacks, I mean, we're on the same page. We've done this together for a long time and, and uh, um, you know, we're, 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 we're a lot alike in a lot of ways. How Sam Bradwell used up his eligibility, unfortunately. He's a good football player, man. I, he, he really is. He, I'd, I'd like to have him back. So. Can you talk about putting together an offensive line from uh, survivors? Well, I, I think it, it's, um, you know, the first thing you want to, I, I, I came in a little late, and I, I heard Coach say that every offensive line coach is going to say, i got to get the best five. So 
Uh, I'm going to say it. I think the first thing you got to do is start with getting them the best five guys. And, uh, you know, he was an outstanding football player. I think there are some guys in this group that can be really good football players also. And, and really the biggest thing you want to do, you want to try to get five guys, and then you want to try to find a sixth guy, and then a seventh guy, and then kind of try to move it around where guys can be put in a couple different spots where guys don't get comfortable being, being a number one guy. And, uh, you know, it's um, – I, I believe that if you if, – if, if you can, if guys think that they may have to sit, they practice better, they prepare better. And so you want to be able to build enough depth uh, that you can put pressure on those guys and that they got to make sure that they continue to work. Um, and yet, you know, you lose a really good football player at a, at a position like offensive tackle is tough, but you know, that's college football. You don't get to keep them for so long. And, and uh, but these guys have worked hard and I think, uh, I think we've got a chance to be pretty good. We got we got a ways to go right now, but but I think we have a chance to be okay. And Fred Zerg must be the leader of this group. Or is he the leader? You know that you know one thing that you know you and, and Coach and I and, and really our whole staff is is you know you want a player led football team. Uh, there, there's there's only uh, there's only so far coaches can go as leaders. Uh, when, when, when the peers are leading, it, it's really leading the right way. And, and leadership is influence, uh, period. Uh, it can be good or it can be bad. And, uh, you know, so we're trying to put them in situations to lead. Uh, Sam Carlson, Fred Zerbless, uh, Jake Bennett's got leadership qualities. Uh, I think those are things that, that uh, it's very important. And, and I've always believed um, that if you can get leadership from your offensive line, your football team's going to be led the right way because they don't get to touch the football. They don't, you know, get a lot of stories about it. So their their goals are going to be team driven. So if you can develop that with that group, then they can take it and, and influence the rest of the football team. I think you you got your program going in the right direction. So that's something that we're constantly talking about. The things those guys have to do. Staff, younger staff, all the coordinators. Uh, I feel old today after yesterday. Uh, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, you know, coaching's coaching. Uh, I hope I'm coaching for many more years, and and that people aren't going, "Hey, he's he's an old coach." So, uh, you know, I I don't I don't really know how if, if it's a benefit or not. I, this staff is outstanding. I think Coach did a great job. Uh, you know, with our offensive staff, with, with, with Jeff and Alvis that, that we kept, and, and, and bringing in Brian uh, Applewhite from Louisiana Monroe. Uh, those guys do a great job. They have energy. Uh, they're knowledgeable. Um, they're good people. Uh, and then you look on the defensive side, um, being able to bring Tyson in, who's an outstanding football coach, uh, who's a tough person who kind of believes in the same things. Uh, that, that we were talking about earlier, and uh, and then keeping Marty, and Ricky Logo, and uh, you know, and then Terry Fair is outstanding also. So you know, we're blessed with how old everybody is. I, I don't know. I know we're, we're old enough to quit telling each other how old we are. But <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's more the fact that it's uh, the group can do their job and do that more than anything. Do you see it has more of a southern football vibe out there? I, Maybe you don't know how it's Yeah, I don't know. I just I, I'm I'm who I am, and and uh, you know, I caught the end of coach's talk. He he's he, I'm not going to talk as fast as coach. All right, so you guys get ready for that. But but I'm I'm who I am, and I think that's one of the things that our staff does a good job of. And and you know, my, my dad was a high school coach, and one of the best pieces of advice he ever gave me is be who you are. You know, because the first guys who uh, who uh, notice it are your players. And uh, so from day one, whether it's Southern or whether it's me, I mean, and, and Coach has been the same way, Tice has been the same way, we're who we are. Yeah, the, the narrative is that, that you know, you, auto, you know, automatically you knew you were going to come with Mike out here as soon as it happened. But as I understand it, uh, you, were, you were a running game coordinator in, in the Southeastern Conference, and I understand Georgia didn't just, they were like, made the play for you to stay with them. You know, they didn't want you to go. Was it was it a difficult decision? Just that whole yeah, up, uprooting family coming into the unknown. Well, um, you know, there there uh, 
there were some close guys on that staff with me also. Uh, you know, my roommate from college was the defensive coordinator there, a teammate in college that, that we started our coaching career together, the outside linebacker coach there, and guys that, that I had great relationships with and still do. And uh, But they understood how Coach and I, Bobo and I worked together. They understood uh, the, the, the part that we kind of mesh up professionally. Um, and we, we were a close group. Uh, that, that staff last year at Georgia were, were offensively and defensively. We, we were, I mean, if you were there, you, you, it was a lot closer. And, and uh, so that was tough. And, and, and then the players, you, you become close with the players, and, and that, was, that was hard. And, and, uh, and then, you know, I stayed for the bowl game, and, and uh, you know, I, I told Mike I came right out, right out here after the bowl game, and the hardest part was the last two days of the bowl game, and then getting ready to go to getting ready to go to battle with those guys, and and then the way we played in that bowl game. I mean, it was. I mean, we played physically. We we we, we won it with the run game and the guys up front, and and so that was tough. But there was there was never a blink as far as what I was going to do, and 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 let me say I love Mark Rick, and and he was good to me too, but but. Uh, some of the loyalty and some of the, the things that, that I learned from him, you know, when I talked to him about coming, he understood. And, and a lot of the, the reason why I came uh, is because things I learned from, from Coach Rick also. How close was this group to that you inherited to a group that you would have recruited? <clears throat> um, I, I, I thought, you know, I thought Fraze did a good job. Uh, you know, we've had some. When, when we got here, there were some guys who were who were banged up a little bit, and that's that's part of it. We've had to kind of deal with that. I know Coach probably talked about the center position with some guys banged up, and and um, but I feel like it's a group uh, that, that's got talent, that's got size, that has some length, um, that that or got a chance to be good football players. Um, you know, the toughest part probably for them right now a little bit is that you know they've been in a system and. and so they learned that system, and now you're going to learn another one. And now it's kind of as you're as you're learning the system and what to do. Now we're kind of trying to push it in a little bit more technique and how to do it. So it's kind of that that's their challenge right now. But you know, the offensive line's repetition, and uh, I think there's good players here, uh, and I think it's it's a group that uh, through time that will that will be a good group, and uh, not not. Um, we got a long way to go, but I think we'll be a good group. In terms of being more physical, more aggressive, how much has that group's mindset changed from when you guys started seven months ago to where you are? Well, well, I think that you know they huddled and there were more things like that, and I think that they they're getting used to the tempo. Uh, you know, when you're going fast and practicing fast with that tempo and, and how quick you're going, I, I think it kind of shocks them a little bit. And I think now they're understanding how we want them to practice. Okay, and now and now they're starting to understand what we're trying to do, and so it, it's getting better. Uh, and it wasn't quite what we wanted in, in the spring. Uh, you know, we had for the first two weeks, and we kind of started to see it at the end of spring. As spring went on, and by the spring game, you know, it was kind of like, hey, we're, I wish we had 15 more days to go. We're ready to go now. And uh, the kids did a great job on their own this summer as far as studying what to do as far as the way they trained this summer. And uh, they've hit it running pretty good. And we've had three good practices, but uh, and that's really offensively as a whole. But you know, now this is where you, where you start to kind of, even as coaches, you know, you got to stay focused and then you start hitting day four and day five. And it's, you know, you got to push and we'll see how they, they were eager and ready to go. And they got to stay focused. And that's where the leadership comes through to keep kind of pushing it because you get 29 opportunities to get better. You are one of the country's most explosive players in Higgins. What, what has stood out to you from a technical standpoint that makes him so good? Well, I, the first thing that, that I think everyone did, this, this kid is extremely humble. Uh, Rashard is extremely humble. He is a great kid. You guys that have been around him, he, he's an outstanding kid. And uh, he works extremely hard. Um, he's explosive. Um, and and he, he is, you know, it's kind of, he got hurt in the spring, and we were careful with him in the spring, and then he obviously we can't really be with him in the summer. So, But these last three days, his tempo of practice and the way he's worked and, and being a leader, and then when you get up in front of the offensive football team and, and, and you, you're talking to the team, and the first thing you you see is, is I mean, he doesn't even blink. 
I mean, he doesn't blink. I mean, he's 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 focused on you and on everything that that, that you're saying, and uh, he he's he's ready to roll. I mean, that's the first thing is his focus, and then his work work ethic is, is outstanding, and then and then he's got a lot of talent too. So the, uh, those those things jump out at you. All right. Thank you. All right.